ability to see that speed trap cross the first beat cross the second beat is a cool part stand up boom blast the bear in the chest slow down slow down slow down and then it hits you that adrenaline rush that, wow i want to do that again i looked at your agenda it said motivational speaker your salespeople. you walked in here sat down crossed your arms and went go ahead motivate me <laughs> what is our human instinct to have balance first or to speed up we want balance first. If we are going to move forward as a culture, as a company, if we are going to break through, we instinctively want balance first. Who are you talking to right now? Well, a guy that went from recreational skier to the Olympic Games in just four years. Our first competitor, the Canadian Vince Pacetti of Calgary, and uh, he's had quite a week here, Curry. Uh, New York Times best-selling author, seven books under my belt now inducted into the Speaker Hall of Fame in both Canada and the United States with the likes of Ronald Reagan, Og Mandino, Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn. To go from recreational skier to the Olympic Games in four years. And then for the last 10 years, I've been ascending mountains in the Himalayas, going on expeditions. <laughs> A friend put it to me this way. He said, Vince, you spent the first half of your life going downhill. Now you're going up. So why don't we go up together? But goodness gracious, if there's one word that would describe audiences today, it's overwhelm. And if, if we're in this state of overwhelm, how are we gonna perform at the highest level? And more importantly, how can that impact everybody around us? So we're interrupted, the national average, let's say six minutes into a task, and to get back on task, if we get back on task at all, is between 23 and 30 minutes if we get back on task at all. More research coupled in. 80% of interruptions are of little or no value, 80%. If you factor that over the course of a year, you, in your life, in the last 12 months, spent 744 hours of interrupted time of little or no value. If you multiply that by this room, that's eight, 191,500 hours of interrupted time of little or no value. And who's responsible for turning that around? Remember this, rising tide raises all boats. So if we can be the rising tide, we can elevate those around us. And we've got mountains in front of us that are waiting to be climbed. I want you to start to feel like you've made these decisions to climb your own mountains because you have a mountain right in front of you. It's, there's a little voice going on in the back of your brain and you've been listening to the other speakers leading up to this and tomorrow you're gonna get more of that little voice. Yet there's a moment, a split second in time where you can either make a decision to climb or a decision to back off. What will we do different after this conference? We want different results. So in order to have different results, it certainly makes sense that what could we do? How could we compete differently? How could we engage differently? How can we be, able to be a better leader? Lead differently. As we've been talking about that $10,000 idea, multiples of that, what will be different? It's, it's obvious, isn't it? We, we, we know we can't cope our way to excellence. We can't, we can't just manage a situation and expect to have extraordinary outcomes. We have defining moments. Great, this is great homework. To spend some time on the defining moments that brought you to this place here today. It will reveal decision-making habits that work for you, and it will also reveal decision-making habits that will not serve you as a leader. To be able to do what the competition's not willing to do is basically a self-honesty mirror. You look in that mirror and you go, what am I not willing to do? What am I not willing to do? With this kind of mindset, if you actually walked again through the trade show here, this floor, and look at the different booths, but had the mindset, what would the competition not be willing to do in terms of engaging with this vendor? Or a question they wouldn't be willing to ask. Right now, your conscious mind is processing what I have to say with 2,000 neurons every second. You're thinking, this might make sense to you, you might be enjoying it, you might be enjoying the humor, you might be enjoying the energy, you might be thinking, man, he looks like Spencer Tracy, Phil Donahue, can't decide. My wife just came up with a new one. It's, you know, you look like the old guy from Up. 
rope. And each of us gone on this rope and it was back and forth. One guy, Philippe Gauchel, was all over the place and he could not stay on the rope. And finally, after everybody had their turn, there was 22 of us in this room. After about 45 minutes, we could not figure it out. And he was just taking his time, the coach was. And he said, okay, stop. Stop looking at the rope. Stop looking at the rope. Look at the point on the wall where you want to end up. And do not take your eyes off that. And so the first guy gets on there and he's looking at the rope, looking at the thing, looking back. He said, stop. Just look at the point on the wall where you want to end up. The rope will always be underneath you. Your feet are always going to be at the end of your legs. Just focus on the point. Within 10 minutes, 22 athletes went from unable to walk even five feet on the rope to walking the length of the rope, turning around and coming back just by changing the focus. If we go beyond the counter, beyond the transaction to the person, being able to be aligned to that, when our focus goes up, everything changes. My youngest, Isabella, went, Daddy, look, I'm shaking my money maker. I went, no, you're not. <laughs> but you can. All right. The hands are the other thing. So stop your hips or slow them down, whatever. Take your hands. Now it's a pump. So it's, go ahead, pump on one side and then pump on the other side. So instead of just pumping your hands, get your shoulders into it a little bit. Now you can even bite your bottom lip if that helps. It does, doesn't it? And now let's put it together. Shake what your mama gave you. Feel the love. <laughs> All right, give yourselves a hand. Nicely done. Thank you. Thank you. And the fascinating thing about our world today is that we're in a world based on instant what? Instant gratification. In a world of instant gratification, if we don't see results when? We get frustrated. Think of an initiative right now. Think of a customer you're working on. Think of a scenario that you're in right now that's a rollout that you're struggling with, that you know will take time. So the ant on the back of the elephant knows this will take time. Consciously, you know this will be delayed gratification. Yet, what is our expectation at a subconscious level as we speak? Instant gratification. Four billion neurons expect it when? Now. And we're in this state of frustration and disconnect, and this isn't working, road rage, whatever happens out there. But if we can point the ant and the elephant in the same direction, it makes it so much easier because then all of a sudden that alignment makes it easier and faster. We're on this journey together, this Olympic journey, and there's impact that you have. And to wrap this up, I'd like you to actually get this emotional buzz of the impact you're having, not just on patients, but their families, on the communities. Please join me in standing and face this direction. Okay. Let's try that again. On the count of three, you ready to commit? <laughs> One, two, Three, commit, point your skis downhill, get into a tuck. Right that, no, this way. <laughs> you gotta face downhill. All right, you're picking up speed, 60 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, 125 miles an hour. And as you're rocketing down this mountain, you're holding, maintaining that tuck. And as you look at that point, your first beam, second beam, boom. The mountain you set out to conquer is now behind you. You look over and see how well you did. But most importantly, you see your family waiting for you. And when you've done that hero's climb, that Olympic journey, you can't help but feel, I want to do that again.